Hello and welcome to today's webinar from Elisa Vadir and Pexit where we will discuss how innovative remote leadership accelerates transformation. My name is Nick Ware, I'm a solutions manager at Elisa Vadir and I'll be your host for today's session. Um, a couple of important things to note, this webinar will be recorded to allow people to watch it back later so if you have friends or colleagues who wish to watch it back later, um, or if you, the, there's anything that you want to see again, uh, we'll be posting out the link after this call. And um, of course, um, if you've joined by, via a PC, you can ask questions from the keynote speakers via the chat. Uh, we will be um, looking at these and selecting the most appropriate questions or perhaps the most popular questions. To do this, um, go to the left-hand side panel uh, on the event sheet um, and as it says on the screen, go to the bottom left corner, uh, tap in your, uh, your question and press enter to send it. Uh, and then um, hopefully we'll have to, a little bit of time later on in the discussion to be able to cover um, those, uh, those questions. So I think um, our subject today is um, how innovative remote leadership accelerates transformation. Uh, so joining me are two respected leaders, two heavyweight leaders um, from the world of video, Henning Herdahl from Pexip and our very own Uwe Ekman from Elisa Badira. Uh, welcome gentlemen and uh, I hope you're well. Perhaps I can ask you to introduce yourselves and um, perhaps tell us where you're speaking from, how you're speaking and, uh, and so on. So Henning, would you like to go first? Yes, thanks Nick. <clears throat> so my name is Henning Hurdle. Uh, I'm working in PECSIP, so I'm responsible for all the partners in PECSIP in uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa. I've been in the video industry for, uh, well, 22 odd years with, um, you know, main beings being in uh, Tamburg, Cisco, Videxio and now PECSIP. So that's me. Okay, and Uwe, same question to you. Thanks, Nick. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Uwe Ekman, uh, I'm, and I'm responsible for the portfolio and solutions uh, at Elisa Videra. I have worked for, for the company in the last six years, and uh, like Henning, so I do have a uh, little bit of experience around the video collaboration whenever I have been worked for within the, uh, the field of video collaboration uh, last 18 years in the various management positions in sales, product development and, and marketing. Yes, Cisco uh, and, and, and Tamburg are, are the one of the companies I have worked also uh, together with Henning uh, throughout the years uh, before uh, my time at Els Videra. And, uh, and as so many times before, so I'm working from, uh, from my home office uh, today as well. Yes, so thank, uh, I forgot to mention that, Nick. I'm okay. working from my home, and not from my home office, but from our office in Oslo. So that's where I'm coming in. Thank you. So we've got um, so the audience. Uh, we've got a, a couple of guys with a few video miles on the clock. I think that's safe to say without being uh, being rude. Um, so thanks very much for. Uh, so let's open the, open the proceedings. So our discussion today is how innovative remote leadership accelerates transformation. Now, um, clearly a very appropriate topic given the the world circumstances at the moment. Um, the obvious and most topical drivers for digital transformation are the changes imposed by the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and I think it's safe to say that many companies who had not considered home working or remote working have suddenly had to adapt to it overnight. They've been forced into the situation. Uh, many managers who've always had staff in offices have been forced to manage remotely um, and so forth. And um, we've seen many organizations and companies that have had to, uh, should we say, um, introduce um, uh, things like uh, new software uh, and new systems and services to try and cope with this remote work. Um, so the digital transformation has clearly been accelerated by this whole thing. Uh, and of course, with this change that everybody's had to go through, and I think pretty much every, everywhere in the world has, has moved to this, um, it's presented some additional challenges to the leaders. Um, you know, people working from home need leadership. Uh, they need reassurance. Um, but they also need to be able to do their jobs efficiently and the you know uh, and so forth so leaders need to create trust help their people through these changes uh, and help them change the way they are working and of course manage uh, properly so um, 
to jump into the first part of this, a recent study by Harvard Business Review uh, in 2020 this year found out that around 40% of supervisors and business managers expressed low confidence in their ability to manage workers remotely. So 40% of these managers are saying, we're not sure how to do this. It's difficult for us. Um, so as two gentlemen who've been in the, uh, the industry for a long time and have managed remotely for a long time, how have you found ways in which you can feel confident that your remote workers are on top of things and your team is doing what they are supposed to do? What are those things and how have you coped with this? Um, if I can perhaps start with Henning, what have you found works best for you? You've been in an industry where remote work has been an accepted practice for many years. So what, um, what advice can you give to managers in this situation? How would, how would you uh, ask them to approach this for the first time? Please, Henning. Thank you, Nick. Very good question. Um, well, there are many elements. Obviously, you know, I have been exposed to video for many years. Um, and I've always been sort of uh, focused on uh, having sort of full, you know, very high level of confidence in uh, in my employees, uh, you know, and a high level of trust, giving them sort of the ability to deliver on what we agree on uh, within sort of uh, the time frame that has been agreed upon. <clears throat> So I think it's a, it's a matter of um, you know having a good open dialogue what the expectations are uh, and also sort of my mantra have always been to be available for my employees sort of because if you are if you are you know talking about trust and sort of giving them the confidence of uh, them being able to do what they're supposed to do or what you agree that we should do together then if there are questions or there are concerns on the way, you need to be available for them. So make sure that you have enough white space in your calendar to be there and help them if help is required and, and needed um, to keep the dialogue going, basically, rather than just uh, make, you know, doing micromanagement doesn't give a lot of confidence and doesn't sort of help the employees to be creative and you know get the motivation that they really need to to de deliver what you as a manager want them to deliver so i think you know, sort of you know trust and giving them the trust and being available for them is sort of some of the key elements at least that i am sort of uh, you know using a lot in my in my daily life in my daily work life so do you feel that um managers faced with this for the first time may kind of um, default to micromanagement is that a fear that you would have in these kinds of uh, situations yeah, well <clears throat> it's it's um i think it's it makes more harm than good to be honest uh, to, to be too uh, you know not to be able to give because in the work environment that we see today i mean uh, there are other other elements that might come into uh, uh, to play, uh, which which can differ from when you are in the office, you know, when you're only in the office and you only have, uh, you know, sort of the, your, your office to, to, to worry about. When sitting at home, there might be other things that, you know, keeps on worrying you, right? So you might want to give them a little bit more flexibility and, a, you know, a bit more, you know, uh, you know, trust than what you would do when they were only in the office. So it's a uh, Okay. I think it's uh, today. It's a little bit in the situation we are today. Uh, there needs to be um, a high level of flexibility in terms of how you manage your employees. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and now over to you. The same question, um, but how how have you found you can retain confidence in your team's performance? Well, I think it's. Um... It's all about timely communication, and and whenever you are and you have a, a chance to kind of also choose your kind of a tools, how you are communicating with your with your team members, obviously that that makes a a, 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 a big difference overall. Um, I think the confidence itself it comes for sure of the knowledge or understanding where really your team is is uh, where, where they are with their task, what they are doing. And, and, and obviously for the team members, it is important that, that they know what to do, what is required for, for this week. So for me uh, to kind of uh, keep that kind of a momentum and, and that kind of, uh, let's say, control, so to say, even though I'm not referring to, to Henning's kind of micromanagement, but still for me uh, as a manager, 
as a leader. So I need to kind of have that kind of a view over the control, the, the, the whole entire team. So it is a kind of a, a meeting written mechanism, what I have for the meetings, uh, whenever those are, are daily or, or weekly kind of a checks or one-to-one -one meetings with uh, with the team members, uh, making sure that, that those tasks, what we have agreed for for this week, uh, are something what we are working through or we are, we are talking through with the KPIs or with those priorities, what we have agreed uh, with the team members. Because the thing is that, uh, like in, in, in normal kind of uh, kind of uh, manager role, so what doesn't get measured doesn't get managed. And that goes for, for the, the remote uh, kind of leadership as well and how you are managing uh, the expectations as well from, from, uh, from the team's point of view. So when that is in place, so obviously you can expect then that that team, they have a clear targets and they know how to execute basically based on, on, on the targets. Okay, so what I'm getting from you both is that first of all, your team needs a structure to kind of um, a framework to which they feel comfortable in working um, and they need that that reassurance from their manager that that, that you know that um, that managing is taking place but not to the degree where they you know they everything that they is remotely scrutinized is that a fair kind of a, um, assessment of, 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 of your points of view there absolutely that's that's how I see it so like I said, so uh, and, and and for sure, Henning uh, uh, touch point is as well. So it is all, all about trust. Uh, when you you trust your workers to get the uh, the, the job done, and, and after all, there is nobody to kind of set to to do kind of a bad job. Uh, so that 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 is a, a kind of a fact. But I think, Henning, but I also think that a very important point in this is that. Obviously, you have the trust and you have the sort of the flexibility. You give that to your employees, but there is nothing wrong in, you know, in having a few touch points on the way as well by proactively calling them and asking them how they are, what they're, you know, how they, how are their daily lives going, and those kinds of things, right? Which is very important. I mean, you can talk about because in the office, you have the social aspects of things. When you're sitting at home, you might not have the social aspects of things where you can you can drop into your manager's office or you can drop into your employee's office and just hear how they are doing that day, right? I mean, I think that's that, that's also an important part that we should not forget. It's it's very important to be able to, or, you know, and that's where uh, Ove's point with equipment comes in, right? That you have the uh, capabilities and possibilities of calling that individual or that person or that colleague whenever you feel for it, right? I mean, if you're using video or voice as your mean, I mean you know, we'd like to think it should always be video, but I mean, you, you could also, or you should as a manager, have that touch space without it being sort of only related to, to work things, right? Or to that so particular the task. Or... The, the kind of, um, you know, meeting yeah. in the office, having a coffee, yes. Whatever you know, just that's right. Bumping someone in the car park, that spontaneity yeah. is is yeah. That's missing from remote work, and and I and I guess there's some um, creativity happens in those kind of conversations as well. So uh, I, I guess um, you know it's difficult for that creativity to 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 be um, uh, you know brought out in in some respects as well without that spontaneity. Yeah, no, but I mean, I think it's like f f now when, when people are sitting at home, right? You, you feel alone more than you do when you're in the office. I mean, the social aspect, I mean, you have a lot of freedom and responsibility when you're sitting at home. Uh, you, 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 in some, some companies, you have that when you're in the office as well, but even more so when you are at home alone, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's important just, uh, you know, potentially as a manager, to touch base every now and then to check out how that individual is doing in general, not only with work related stuff, but as an individual as well. I mean, you know, uh, you know create a sense of, uh, of, uh, of being uh, a part of a, a team of an organization, even though you're sitting at home alone, you know, perhaps even, you know, having, you know, meetings like we are having now, but for the team where people can just sit down and chat and have a sort of a, uh, 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 a conversation without uh, you know it necessarily being sort of a work-related task. So, are you suggesting perhaps having um, an open uh, an open meeting, perhaps over video, where people are in the same office doing their own work, but remotely, so they have that banter across the office? That's um, true. I mean, that, it's that like yeah, that, 
<clears throat> there are all sorts of uh, possibilities here in terms of being creative and to get people together, basically. Fantastic. Okay, um, there is a, a second part to the to the Harvard um, survey, uh, a second uh, a two sides to every story, if you like, um, and so that this, the Harvard study that we talked about earlier has also shown uh, that workers have a hard time unplugging from work. So people thrown into remote work for the first time. I mean, uh, you know, myself and you guys have, have been remotely working for years, and we've kind of got the hang of it, I guess. But people doing it for the first time seem to be anxious about uh, feeling they need to be always on, always available. They need to answer that email straight away, that text, that WhatsApp. And if you think about it, there's a myriad, myriad of ways that they can be contacted. Um, and of course, that feeling adds to stress and anxiety of a, a very stressful situation for everybody at the moment, uh, you know, with their circumstances changed. Um, so uh, as business leaders, how, how can you help your workers unplug and find a better work-life balance while still addressing the issues of performance. Um, perhaps, Uber, we can start with you uh, on this one. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Very good question. Um, well, for sure, work-life balance, like like always in life, it's important. So uh, I would say that for me, what I'm really kind of embracing here, so I really kind of want to deploy flexible work hours to start with. That's something what really gives you the freedom then to do those kind of a daily task, what you need to do uh, beside the, the work and so forth, whenever that means means that that you are just kind of having that half an hour to kind of just kind of a pick up kids from school or you're, the, you're, you're driving to school or that you are having that kind of a half an hour, let's say, time for a kind of walk in the park or in, in, in the woods with your dog in the middle of the day. So those are things which gives you the, the flexibility and, and, and that, that, that is what, what I see as a, a kind of a flexible kind of uh, a, a working kind of method or, or model uh, where you are basically mastering your kind of uh, uh, time uh, d during your, your kind of uh, uh, daily work. So what I'm saying is that, that so what you should do is that free up your workers time to kind of uh, give them time to and help them to kind of adapt their home working and you will be rewarded as a leader then whenever you are giving that to them. So that will come as a kind of a curveball back to you with that more efficient kind of a workforce for sure uh, as a kind of uh, so, so I guess say, it performing what team. You are saying earlier is that trust is, is repaid. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's then first of all, it's the trust. And then when you are giving that time and, and you're giving that kind of uh, flexibility with where it comes to work hours is important. So em embrace the flexibility, that's what I'm saying. And, and then whenever, as you as a worker then, uh, and suppose that goes for me as well, so whenever you are able to kind of define your work hours, so that gives you more visibility to kind of your daily, daily or weekly task, what you need to basically, uh, uh, let's say, um, do uh, during, during this week, if, if that's the case. And then as a manager, I think this is important. What I just realized just recently that, that whenever you are, um, you are pushing and you are stretching the limits when, whenever the, that job needs to be done. So please make sure that, that don't go with the email and chat overload because that is something which really kind of, uh, that will do kind of a more harm than, than good. And right. whenever you are communicating, whenever there are, let's say, tasks, what we need to prioritize, like always, so then you need to kind of choose the right kind of the type of tools to communicate that. Whenever I would say video first, like always, then audio, thirdly, chat, and then if and when you need to, so, okay, you can use the email. Okay. Henning, anything uh, you'd like to add or a different view or something that you found yourself that works in those circumstances to help kind of relieve that no, stress I think I agree workers. a lot with uh, with Uwe it's like uh, I mean if you have the you know the proper dialogue I mean it's like as a manager at least you know if you focus uh, on the outputs and not the process I mean it's up to then to the individual to prioritize their time in terms of uh, making the job done within the right uh, time frame right <clears throat> And within that lies the flexibility for that particular employee to decide when or he or she wants to do that particular task, right? And I think that's that's lies. And so then, 
I mean, and, and, I had, and, and honestly, I think most employees, they would like to do the best they can. But, uh, you know, yes. but at the same yes. time, we need, may, need to make sure that they also, you know, take care of their sort of their family, their private life. You know, that, you know, we, we shouldn't expect them or shouldn't sort of have a culture in place where there is a 24 seven sort of, uh, you know, reachability for all employees. There should, it needs to be sort of built into the culture in terms of when, you know, why and what is important when it comes to reachability. Uh, and again, that comes back to sort of the, the trust of their place that they they do what they're supposed to do. But the dialogue that we have with our employees, you know, as a manager gives them the flexibility because we are more focused on the objective than the process itself. I think that's that's uh, really key in this. So is, is it fair to say, um, you know, allow your 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 work, workers to deploy the time how, how they wish? Uh, and and to get those tasks done, but but also provide a framework to help them prioritise things so it gets done as the business needs as well. So allow them the time to to do the tasks how they want to do them, but also prioritise so that they have a framework to to hang their work day around. Is that a fair? Kind yes, of, um, and I think it's like it's like you know with remote working, you, you, uh, you know, like me for instance. You know, I, I, I wasn't very fond of it in the beginning, but you need to get, even though I've been working remotely because I've been dealing with video for 20 odd years and having teams all over the world, uh, it's a difference between sitting being remote and being at home, sitting at home working than sitting in the office having a remote team. I, I think that was a big difference. And then, you know, getting into the habit of, you know, getting up in the morning, putting your clothes on, sitting, getting in front, opening the PC, starting the day, basically. There's a, there are lots of things that needs to happen there as well to get into the habit of working from home. Working from remote is fine because that's something where, you know, at least we are used to sitting in a remote office from where your employees are based. But sitting in, in, a, in a home, being sort of managed or managing people, it's also a different task altogether, right? So you need to get into the habit and start the working day and get into sort of, you know, what you need to do within certain time frames so that you don't end up sitting sort of working all day or all night because there are so many other things that is preoccupying your day, right? So it's, uh, it is important to, you know, get into a habit of what you want to do and how you want to do it. Okay, so it's, it's build, you know, build, build your day up, make sure that you, you, you have a set routine, um, get your priorities set and so forth. We'll probably now, make your um, life a bit easier, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, we've had a, a couple of questions in, and, and most of them seem to be around, um, uh, you know, the uh, accidental discussion. So I'll read this one out for you, and, and perhaps um, you can answer briefly on this because we are uh, getting close to, to the end of time. But based on your experience, how can you support the organisation to give the everyday innovation ongoing when the accidental discussions at the water cooler in the office do not happen? So um, I think we touched on this briefly earlier. So you know there are there are elements to our work day that are not pres prescribed there are things that happen through spontaneity through meeting people and so forth um and and so how do you cope with that what do you do about that and how does remote and does the remote work actually slow down innovation in your view so um a very brief answers gentlemen i'm afraid because we are running out of time so perhaps uva can start with you yeah, just kind of quickly, whenever you mentioned the, the water cooler uh, kind of a thing, so I, I think uh, we can do that also, and we have done done it you know, kind of uh, virtually as well. So whenever we, we want to kind of meet up with uh, with the team members and kind of uh, kind of uh, exchange their ideas and, uh, and, and thoughts and so forth, so we can do that uh, remotely as well in a kind of a, a virtual meeting room like, like this, a kind of... Uh, a, a kind of a space where we have all have let's say the common uh, let's say uh, 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 agenda for for that particular let's say session whenever that will be a kind of a thirty minutes or or one one hour kind of meeting and we are we're going to kind of discuss that how we are going to basically solve or, or come up with a, a kind of new product or a kind of a new marketing campaign whatever so we can do that remotely obviously it's not the same thing it that I cannot smell or or. Or, or, or I cannot kind of uh, touch the uh, my kind of uh, my colleague there, but virtually we can do it. So we need to be kind of innovative <laughs> in that sense as well, and just kind of uh, 
kind of, uh, uh, let's say, hammer down those barriers, which are, by the way, in here, not physically. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and Henning, um, same question to you. Yeah, no, I think it's, I mean, if you have a sort of a culture where you encourage innovation, I mean, I think it's a lot easier to, you know, and, and if you then have the framework or you have the, I would say, I will call it the systems and, and structure, let's call it the equipment to meet up, whether you're physically meeting up or you're, you know, virtually meeting up, it shouldn't really make that much of a difference if you have that culture built into your organization. So I think at least during these days, it's even more important to encourage innovation. There should be room for innovation because there are some people are doing so many different things in in a, such a different way that people should be able to you know be you know perhaps even more creative you know than what they normally are. So, I mean, if you then create meeting spaces and meeting places, uh, you know, you know, preferably on video, to have a sort of a general dialogue about topics, then I think that could be sort of equally good as meeting in person in a meeting room, so to say. So what I'm getting here is that, um, you know, that possibly being remote kind of slows that down a little bit. But actually, if you work at it and you break down those barriers, it, they don't need to be barriers, right? Uh, and you need to just put put things in place and put that culture in place that so you, that, that can still happen. But it just takes a little bit of effort um, initially from, from remote working. So, so, I mean, that's, um, that's, uh, just to, to reiterate, I mean, that's yeah, where sure. the, yeah. let's call it the quality and the systems and the products that you have available for your employees becomes very important. If they yes. don't work, if you have bad voice, bad video, and it doesn't feel like you're in the same room, like, like we here now, then it becomes difficult. But you have the right proper equipment for the employees and they enjoy, enjoy using that equipment. It will make uh, the whole thing a lot and the process a lot easier. Okay, um, so uh, we are running out of time now. We've run out of time, so I'd just like to um, just finish up with a couple of things here. Um, so first of all, um, we know there are many questions that have been been asked, um, and if we haven't, we only really got to ask one question, which seems to be a popular one today. Um, any other questions that have been asked, we will uh, ask the panel, and we will post the replies after the after the call. Um, uh, together with the details of the recording and information about our next discussions. The next discussions that we have coming up um, on the 14th of October, Unified Video Experience Anywhere. Uh, 21st, we have Safe and Scalable Video Conferencing. Uh, and then 28th, Global Delivery and Deployment Services. So watch out for those. That information will, will go to you um, uh, very shortly after the call. Um, we, just to finish off, we, we asked our two esteemed guests earlier um, their top three tips that uh, they've found personally work for them in their experience of remotely managing. Um, we have them, we have them here, and um, we will uh, we'll be posting those as well. But if I can perhaps ask uh, you, gentlemen, uh, very briefly, your top three tips that have personally work for you for remote working and managing remotely, uh, Henning. Uh, availability is my priority number one. Uh, okay. being available for my employees. Uh, then obviously I'm a big uh, trust guy, so I trust my people. I uh, I like to trust my people before I see uh, the, the, the contrary happening or the opposite happening. And I like to create a strong uh, community to make sure that people feel that they are part of a team and uh, part of a, a community, which uh, which they all are, right? Even if you're working from remote, you are uh, a, a very important part of a, of a community. Okay, and uh, Uber. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, so, well, I would start with that. That So whenever the remote working is a kind of a new thing for, for most of us, so whatever you're doing as a leader, so lead by example. Uh, that's that's my kind of number one uh, tip. And like always, so so be intentional and clear with the, the expectations uh, whenever you are you are leading remotely. So put those plans in place whenever that is a kind of a, a, a action plan with the KPIs for this week. So then you can expect that and whenever you are reviewing those, it's kind of a, a very kind of a good workflow in that sense as well and dialogue uh, with your team members. And obviously, whenever the goals are, are clear, so that's equally important. And then, like Henning said, so whatever you do, 
please keep in mind that that everything or what is important so create trust and and, and engage engage with that uh, with the workers so be available available uh, so uh, uh, whenever that's uh, or early morning or late evening so uh, i think that's equally important okay thanks uh, gentlemen uh, most enlightening i think something there for for everybody um i think um in summary, what I'm getting from, from this is, you know, for our initial question of how innovative remote leadership accelerates transformation, how do we cope with remote leadership? I'm, I'm getting the first thing that really comes across from this discussion is that you need to trust your people to do a to, to do job they're doing and nobody's out to do a bad job. So I think um, that's that's one. Um, Henning, very, very true is about the availability um, feel that your workers so your workers can feel that they can contact you and they get your support. That seems to have been come out in the in the call. Fostering a sense of community, those water cooler conversations, so people feel part of, of the team, even when perhaps uh, they are remote. Um, give your workers time to do the job, and finally, give them great tools to be able to do it, so that those tools become invisible. As you said today, it feels like we're in the same room. Um, so tools, time, trust and availability seem to be the watchwords for this discussion. So uh, I'd like to thank um, our guests, um, Henning from Pexip and Uwe from uh, Lisa Bedera. Most interesting discussion. hope uh, you, the audience, have enjoyed it too. Um, and um, as I say, we're posting this stuff, um, the, web the future webinars, the link to the recording and your questions. You'll uh, get that a little bit later on. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank you, the audience, for taking part. Have a great day. Uh, keep safe and meet video. Thank you.